Kum Lenin Ablak Mura. Today's blot is Daf Lamed Zion Aluf. It's Wednesday, it's Yud Bey's Nissen. We are up to the two dots. So the Mishnah says that if someone married his sister in law, she was a Yavama, and the Yava married her, then we have a doubt whether it is nine months to the first husband or seven months to the second husband, we're not sure whose child it is. So the din is as follows. As far as the child is concerned, it makes no difference. Either way, the child is kosher, it could even become a kain godl, as the world will say, because if, if it's a first child, then it's 100% kosher. And if it's a second child, then it proves all along that when he married her, she, she turned out to be that she was a Yvama. And um, because she was a Yvama, then his brother was supposed to marry her. So as far as the child is concerned, everything is all right. But as far as they are concerned, when he um, when he go ahead, got ahead and married her, and um, and she was pregnant, and we didn't know who it turned out to be she was pregnant later, the, um, they have to bring an Ashram Tully, because there's a possibility that this child was the first husband's child, and then he had no right to marry her. She was an Asian's Ach. For that, you get Karis. So we have a discussion between Robert and Nacht. Says the Gemara in the Flam and Zayin Omer Alu by the two dots, about fifteen lines on top. Sovik Ben Teisha Omer Le Rov Zalan Achmer Rov Zalan Achmer Leima. Why don't we apply the rule here? Halech Achar Reiv Noshim. We can always follow the laws of majority, and the rule is but Reiv Noshim with Tishiyom. Majority of women give birth a full term pregnancy, nine months, which means it's the first husband child, and therefore if the first husband child and the second. The brother was definitely committed an Aveda. So instead of just bringing an Ashram Tully, which means an Ashram, you're not sure if you committed an Aveda, not a uh, guilt offering, you should bring Karbachatis. Amalek and Nachman responded, Nashididon, Lishivio. Now women, they generally give birth to seven months. And because they generally give birth to seven months, then there's a good possibility it was from the second husband, and there's no reason to have a chat. That's why you bring an Ashram Tully, you're not sure. Amalek sort of says, What does that help us? Nashidid Ku have a Ruvid Alma. You're, you're, your, the, the women in your family, are they the majority of the world? My question was, you should follow the rules of majority, because the rule is you always follow majority. Omelechachi kam, is what I meant to say. We have two can't opposing raves, and they cancel each other out. What is that? Raiv, not sure. On the one hand, most women, majority of women, Yolda and Letitia, have a full-term pregnancy, and therefore we'll assume that it's the first husband. And she had no right to marry the second husband. But me, Lashiva, and it's only minority that um, after seven months or in the seventh month, it could even be six months in a couple of days, um, they can really be a child. That's number one. On the other hand, we have an opposing right. And the opposing right is the whole Haye led this Letitia. At the moment, we think it's all the women. Any woman who gives birth full term after full term pregnancy, Ubra Nikila Shlishima. In, in the third month, the end of three months, you should already recognize that she's pregnant. Over well, here, you didn't. Because you don't recognize that third in the third of the nine months, I mean, the end of three months that she was pregnant. And uh, that, that's the reason why we have a doubt that maybe it's a second uh, husband, because it didn't, the second husband might be seven months and, and the third of that. In fact, when we say a third, could even be a seven month, has to be after three months. And therefore, she, if she would have seen it before, then we know definitely it's the first husband. So there must be. That the fact that she didn't um, recognize that she was pregnant proves that it does not belong to the first husband at all. So we have two opposing rights, says the And that's why we say we don't know what was the state of limbo. Aushim Tully says the Gemara, what are we two opposing rights? You're not saying it's a right, you're saying everyone, e but a Nicholas Jamel, you tell me that every single woman that's pregnant and that has a full term in the third end of the third month, we already recognize whether she's pregnant. In this case, because we didn't recognize in the third of her period, in her term, that's not a, not a majority, it's 100%. It came from the second husband. If it came from the second one, there's no beta whatsoever. Ella, let us say, Ema, you're right. Not everyone. Rave how you led this teacher Uber Nikola Majority. So you have one majority that says that most women carry the full nine months. You have another majority that says that most women that had nine months, they were already recognized and then three months. The high middle of Hukushiman, here because you didn't recognize in three months, East Uber. The rave has been undermined. And that's why you have two opposing raves. We don't know which way to do. 
Teja already discusses it should be more than three. It should be that uh, three months and three days. Now, why do we say that if you um, we say that you have to have Havchana, we discussed in the last few days, that you need to distinguish the child, the first husband, the second husband, we wait three, a period of three months. So you should actually wait a period of three months and three days because three days could be the Sheikh Vazera is, is, is sort of, you know, takes a few days till it penetrates. And therefore, and three months from whenever it penetrates. So you need three months and, and three days. This is one throwing has a discussion of that. Tell you about it further. Um, um learned. Risha in Rose and Goggle. What happened? Let's say Ruben and Shimaru was married to Leia. And then Shimon goes ahead and uh, and and um, and gives her um, you know, there was no children. So he goes ahead and he marries her, and then it turns out to be that she is pregnant, not a suffer is If it's the first husband, you have no right to marry her. And if it's the second husband, then obviously it's a bit of you above. Now, if it's as far as the child is concerned regarding the child, the child um, um, either way is perfect. If it's the first husband, fine. And if it's the second husband, then the Mitzvah Yibama, then fine again. There are no children with the first husband. But it goes further. Vishaini Mamzim is suffered. She continues, Leah continues living with Shimon. And now, since it's possible that the, the child, the first child they had belonged to Ruvain, that means she had no right to live with Shimon. And she continued living with Shimon, the second child, the Suffolk Mamzer. Abelzman Yaakov says, Abelzman Yaakov says, he used the following word, which is very cryptic, ain Mamzer Ms. Suffolk. There's no Mamzer for Suffolk. Now, what did he mean to say? Did he mean to say that a Mamzer Ms. Suffolk is not even considered a Mamzer, cannot marry a Mamzer Vada, or he meant that there's no such thing as a mamza or something that a mamza is a mamza and therefore a mamza and all can marry each other. What did he mean? I have an argument about it. Rabbi. My karma, what do you mean? I'm going to buy a bicycle. How come? Risha, in the first opinion, Tanakama says, Risha, the first one to be kind God will be shady, suffix mamza. And therefore, the also the mamza, according to Tanakama, um, a suffix mamza cannot marry a bad mamza because it could be this, this, there's a possibility that something mamza is not even a mamza. How can you live with the body of But Abelezeb and Yaakov, and Abelezeb and Yaakov, and the halachi is always like a resume and Yaakov. That's why it's so important to know what he says. Ain't a suffix mamzer, el mamzer. He says that a suffix mamzer has the same status as a body mamzer, umut be mamzeris. Because he says, as since they're both not considered the kalashem, a mamzer is allowed to marry someone who's not a member of the kalashem. A mamzer can marry a gyatus. And so therefore, a suffix mamzer is also not part of the kahol. A suffix mamzer can marry a body mamzer. That's what Bezman Yaakov says. And therefore, Abayi wants to learn that, um, uh, that, that Rabbi Lezman Yaakov, which is, the, which is the halacha, should fit into what we said before. <clears throat> um, and, and sorry, we'll soon see why he wants to learn this way. Why he wants to learn that the suffering mamz is permitted to body mamz. Rabbi Lezman exactly that. Hachkab, the Tanakam says that he should only go to the Shani mamz of Adim Mesopheg, Mut Mamzeris. That the Talakam is one of the Sabi Mamza cannot live with the Vadim Mamza. Comes when Yaakov says, Ain Vadim Mamza Mesophic. Hello, Sophic Mamza, but also with that. And, and Rosin Yaakov says, No, Sophic Mamza cannot live with the Vadim Mamza because the Sophic Mamza possibly is not, a, is not even a Mamza and therefore forbid. Who can meet the Gibbet Rabbi Lazar? And this argues with Rabbi Lazar. What's this Rabbi Lazar? Now we learn Rabbi Lazar, I mean, Rabbi Lazar says, Vadon, the Vadon, Mutri, if you have a Vade Mamza, the Vade Mamza, it's no problem. They can marry each other. Vadon, the Sveik, and it will spell it out. But if you have a Vade, as we'll see, Mamza and a Suffolk Mamza, or Sveik, the Vade, a Suffolk Mamza, the Vade Mamza, so a Sveik, a Sveik, or two Sveik, and Mamza, and also they're forbidden because one of them might be a Mamza, one of them might not. Have a lane Sveik, and it goes spelled it out. Stuki, Stuki means a, we silence. We don't know who the father is. We do know who the mother is. We have no idea who the father is. And the mother, every time you accuse her, or allege a certain person, she would silence you and say, no, that's called a shtuki. A sufi is gathered together from the outside. We have no idea who either of the parents are. Now, there's a, both of them are the suffering mamzer. They're suffering mamzer. And kusi, and a kusi as well. well why are kusi says suffering mamzer? Because they didn't. They only believe what says in the trader. No way the trader clearly say you can give kets of kedushin to a woman. We learn how to say, kicha, kicha. So therefore, they believe it's only beer. And they didn't take it seriously. If they gave money to a woman, you know, they didn't take it seriously. If it broke up, they wouldn't bother giving a divorce. So they produced a lot of mamzei. But it's a safi. We don't know for sure. But we don't know about the rab holds about the loch like rab holds which says a word that a safi and a safi and a vada is forbidden. So, rab, so according to rab, rab loza holds a safi and vada is forbidden. Then Rabbi Lozam and Yaakov holds that a suffix cannot marry a body, which is Rabbi's opinion. 
Kamita Kamita Shmu. We said before Shmu, Amali from just the opposite. That he learned, he learned in the tradition. He learned Asar Yuchsin Alba Bubble. There were ten different classes of people, categories of people that went from Bubble to Eretz Yisrael. Kahani Levi Yisraelim, and they could all marry into each other. Chaloli, a coin was a chol, or a gede, or a gay, or a charuri, or ever that was liberated. These three can all marry each other. Then you have Mamzeid in the sin of Stukke Vasufi. You have these four. A Mamza in the sin, that's the nation of the Givani who tricked uh, Yeshua. They sort of um, deceived them by saying that they, they came from outside of Israel and Yeshua accepted them. And then later he found out that, um, you know, that they were actually from Eretz Canaan that had to be destroyed. So he allowed them to remain, but he treated them like slaves. Stukke Vasufi. That's the next category. But Kulu Mutad in love is ever said. And Hillel said clearly that a Mamza and a Sina and a Shtuki and a Sufi, Shtuki and a Sufi are Suffolk Mamza, can all marry each other. So Hillel Paskin that a Suffolk Mamza can marry a Vade Mamza, not like Rabbi Lozer. But I don't look at Rabbi Lozer. So Shmuel holds that a Suffolk can marry a Vade, and Rabbi Lozer holds that a Suffolk cannot marry a Vade. Comes along a Baya, Baya, Sovela, he holds like Shmuel, like a Lacha, like a Lacha, that a Suffolk. Could marry a Vadai Umukal or Rabbi Yaakov, so therefore he learned Rabbi Yaakov. Same thing, because we know that Allah is always like Rabbi Yaakov, and therefore he understands that Rabbi Yaakov holds that a Sufi can marry a Vadai. Um, and the uh, rubber holds differently. And the Kehechel Tikshir, because the rubber Tikshir has a question one Allah to another. Rubber holds like that. Rabbi holds like Rab the Amar Halacha ki Rabbi Lozer Halacha like Rabbi Lozer, which says that a Sufi cannot marry a Vada. Umuk Rabbi Ben Yaakov the Yichus and therefore he also established Rabbi Ben Yaakov Halacha that a Sufi cannot marry a Vada. So we shouldn't have a question for one Halacha to another. Amar Rabbi Yisrael Bayi Min Amila How do I know the Chos Feika? How do I know that according every Sufi according to Rabbi Ben Yaakov is kibade mashule? How do I know that every suffix of Kodra Bazin Yaakov is treated like a Vadai and if a suffix Mamzer can marry, of how do I know that's a Bazin Yaakov's opinion, can marry a Vadai Mamzer? The time of Bazin Yaakov, but had Ishiba al Noshim Harbe, let's say that this man had relations with many women, but any day lazy man, but we don't know which women he had relations with. She had relationships with many different men, but he had no idea where they came from. No, it was a Suffolk Mamzer. So we have a problem. Of Nisus, there's a possibility, let's say she had a child with one man, I don't remember who it is, and then she gets married to somebody else, and that somebody else might be the, um, uh, might be the one that she's married to. Uh, that's what she's going to marry. So that's what she's going to marry. So that's what she's going to marry. So that's what she's going to marry. And then the child, the children don't know, but this is come from the same father. And who knows what's going to happen. And it could be one day they'll meet. That um, it could be that this man, or the man that had a relation with her doesn't know that she even had a child. And one day he meets this young girl and he decides to marry her and it's his own daughter. But Achna, he says, her brother can't marrying a sister. And this suffix means that the world will be replete, will be filled with mamzein. So we see he turned the suffix into a badai. That's what it says, the mullah or zima, the entire world will fill the zima with uh, zima is, is, is alluded to. So therefore, it sees the debauchery. So we see clearly from here that what? That he holds a suffix is like a vada. That's what the bias says. So something vams like a vada and 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 um, and a lot of marry each other, which is like hill. However, Rabbi says no. You missed the point when he says molar zima zima doesn't mean definitely mamzer. Zima means zuma. On the contrary, it's a suffix. Hachikam zuma. What is the situation? And there was only a suffix mamzer. Only suffix mamzer are permitted to marry suffix mamzer, but not or, I mean, that should be forbidden. But definitely you cannot marry a vada mamzer. That's what the Rabbi said. Um, yes, again, I'm going to be like, you saw the in the zoo, but based on the same you know, concerns that we have, that this uh, have care is of families are not really probably proper family you know, as a person should not marry, even there's a proper marriage, forget about this news. A person should not marry a woman in this country, and go another country and marry a woman, and the two don't know about each other's existence. Maybe a child born for that woman. But it would be a boy and a child born from the woman from another country would be a girl and one day meeting and, and, and marrying each other. Same concern. Saying about any, it's not so we really we learned elsewhere we look for you, but I've key equal dash when I came to town dash the Mahdi to make announcement to Omar Man Havi and he was looking to marry he which which woman would offer to become my wife uh, while I am here. The Mara says for the day, Rashi actually says for a number of days. 
Rav Nachman, Nachman, same thing. He equal the shchantzim. He can't say shchantzim. Machvid. He would now. So I'm a man. Have the yomer. Who wants to be my wife for the day, over the week? So we seek love in my eye, then we'll go back to his hometown. What happened to the child with the woman here? And they, they, all the problems you just uh, you just alerted us to, and they weren't concerned. I said, well, that's different. Shiny Rabbonin. Rabbonin are very different. Why? The Pkia Shemayu. Because everyone would, if everyone in the, these are famous Rabbonins, if they had a daughter, the daughter we recall, that Rab Nachman's daughter, they would, um, and therefore the Rav's daughter. And therefore, no problems can ever arise. So as you get more, but the message question, how can they come into town? And straight away marry a woman for the day. But what Rabbi Rabbi said, didn't we learn? If you propose to a girl to marry, even as far as she relented, later she when came, she might be so excited that causes some blood to to um, to exude be emanate from her, and therefore you have to wait seven, seven queen days. So how can Rabbi or not come into town, meet someone that same day, get married? You can't just wait seven days. Says so he because they gave them a heads up. Rabbanon shluchai have a mishadu. They were sent out shluchim or maidilu. They would notify them a while before, so they had so they were excited, ready. They accepted, and the period was over. We by say or we could say these rabbanon yichude ba'almahude miyachtele. These rabbanon didn't actually live consort with them. They just had them as a wife, and uh, and 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 and, just, and that's it. Nothing more than that. What's the point of that? Don't matter. Ain't you doing the mishi yesh lay pas pasali? You can't compare someone that has bread in the basket. Let mishi ain't the pas pasali. If you have bread in your basket, you know the fast is over. During the fast, you're very hungry. The fast is over. You don't run straight away and eat because now that you know you could eat, the hunger pangs are not so strong. So the same over here. As long as he has a wife in his town, he doesn't feel a need to actually have any relations. Now that we're talking about Rabbi Zmiyaka to the laws of marriage, he also said. A person, a person should not marry a woman without the intention to divorce at the same time. You know, it says, it says about the or the Echoro, do not sit there and anticipate for your friend to do bad legation. But you know, this thing is secure, the confident thing, and everything's all right. And in fact, your intention is to divorce them. You shouldn't do that. And um, yeah, <clears throat> so you want to further um, now. So we said. Now we're going to talk about Dini Mamas. We said that he's considered <clears throat> the monarch of the child is, is, is kosher because either the first or the second. So what will happen when it comes to inheritance? How do we deal with this? Because the Reuben dies, Shimon takes over. But if Reuben had a child, then the child inherits. And in this case, we don't know. His child is Reuben's child. He inherits the whole entire amount. If the child is Shimon's child, then the child just inherits like the rest of the rest of the siblings. So what do we do? So in the first mission in, in Shlaim Mason, we have a rule. That, uh, and Sumcha says uh, on the place that Mumma Namut Mumma Namut Masaf of you always divide. That uh, since you don't know which way to go, we divide. And even though we have a machlek of Sumcha and Chachamim, because Chachamim say Hamoitzach Beil Verai, whoever wants to extract the money, they should bring proof. But in this case here, there is no uh, possibility to bring proof one way or another. So they're both you know, there's no Moitzi here; they're both equal. And therefore, even Chachamim might the Mumma Namut Zavachalki, you divide the money equal. So this is a number of scenarios. Safik. This child, we'll call the child, we don't know the first or second, uh, Reuben or Shimon's child, we'll call him the Suffolk. And the other Shimon, the one who married Reuben's wife. Shabbat Allah, Chalak, Ben Nich, Seh, Mishnah, now Reuben died and they come to distribute his inheritance, his assets, Suffolk, and other Mishnah, maybe I'm the son. I want to inherit the entire amount. Then the Chassid, you, so all my property. The other mom, and the other and the other says, Shimon says, no, maybe you're my child, you deserve nothing. The less love will let me, you have nothing in the Chassid, it's my estate. Having mom and a mutual suffix, so this is the money that's, that's, that's hanging it out. What do you do? You divide. What about the suffix? We're going to bring in each scenario, we're going to talk about the suffix, we're talking about either the Yavam himself, Shim himself, or his children. Now he's having a discussion with his children, and, uh, and, and now there's the still dividing with the state. Shimon died pretty soon after before they had a chance to distribute the state. And now, the Suffolk is having an argument with Shimon's children. Suffolk, I am the son of Ruben, and everything is mine. But now you have Shimon's children say, at Ochino, if you're our brother, and all you have is the equal share, like whatever we have with two other brothers, so you have a third. The rabbis initially thought, they said to Rabbi Shashim, we believe this case, what's the Mishnah? What's the Mishnah? the Mishnah? That now we learn who a new Yiddish Isam. We learn that he doesn't yash in them. 
Now we talked about if you have a suffix, if it's a nine months or the first, or seven months or the seven, and so he does not yashin um, each one. This child, is the Reuben had children, and Shimon had children, and we're not sure if he was Reuben's child or Shimon's child. He gets nothing. Reuben's children say, maybe you're from Shimon. Don't leave us alone. You prove otherwise. Shimon's children say, maybe you're from Reuben. Leave us alone. Is the who and he does not yashin them, but they all him. Um, and so this is a behachan of here. They wanted to say, if uh, so, just like over there, he had no chazaka, he had no way of proving either one, so he's left without anything. Over here, exactly the opposite. If anything, he definitely yashes because if he's Ruben Charlie, he yashes all of it. If he's Shimon Charlie, he yashes the third. So he definitely yashes. And therefore, he has the right to say to them, I'm definitely yashing. You guys might maybe don't have yashin at all, because if, if, if I'm Reuben's child, you get nothing. Prove to me who, that you have a chelik in it, and you will get something. So you know, um, yeah, hasa, hasa, over there, he says to them, I said, I wish they the brothers say to the suffer, you prove who, which one is your father, and then you'll collect. Here, the other way around, the suffix tells the, his, his brothers, Possible brothers, I Surah is cool. You bring it out that you are my brothers, that I'm a son of Shimon. You'll get a share as well. That's what they. That's what they tried to say to Rabbi Shashi. Oh, Rabbi Shashi, we don't need Hakani Beir Hasam in who vaday in who suffer. Over there, the children of Reuben definitely Yashin. The third children of Shimon definitely Yashin, and this suffer is a suffer. Sachako. So therefore, we don't know if he gets anything. Each one pushes him and says, "Go to the other one." Um, so me, the Hossam Inu Vada, he's a definite, they're a definite, he who suffered is a doubt, gets anything. Hoch over here, Ide be Ide Sveku, because even the suffix, if he says, Perhaps I'm Ruben's Ruben's child, he's not saying it's definitely I'm Ruben's child. It's not like in the other case, they were Ruben's children, Shemeth's children, and each one says, I'm definitely Ruben's child. Who are you? Here, the suffix says, Maybe I'm Ruben's child, so he is not a definite. So in this case, it's not a definite. How can he tell the brothers, uh, the children of Shimon, you guys get nothing? That's not so. What's the outcome? If you want to compare it to anything, I'll tell you what you compare it to. We have a case where a Suffolk and the children of Shimon, they came to divide the state of Shimon, not the state of Reuben. They're coming to divide the state of Shimon. In this case, Shimon's children definitely Yash. The, the, the Suffolk, perhaps Yash, perhaps doesn't. Maybe it's Reuben's child. So they say to him, I see Rai that Chavonat proved to us. Um, that you are our brother, and then you'll take. Okay, Safi. So what happened to Safi Bnei Next scenario, Safi Bnei Yavam. Shabo Lachle Benichse. Not in the Chasim of Ruben, in the Mishnah, but rather in the Chasim of Shimon. The boss of the Pali Yavam Benichse Mishnah. Shimon already inherited Ruben, and a couple of years later, Shimon himself passes away. Bnei Yavam Amri Bnei Yavam say to the Ruben to the Safi, who says you're our brother? Maybe you're Ruben's child. I said I don't want to have to bring a proof that your brother you'll take. Amru Safi Safi says to them, no. In this case, is different. Manusha, if you claim that I'm not your brother, that means whose son am I, Ruben? If I'm Ruben's son, then your father had no right to take any money, Ruben. And let's reopen the case, and I'll get full, uh, the full money of Ruben. If you're my brother, so, and, and if you are my brother, I'm Shimon's son, then I'm entitled to the same thing you guys are. Hopefully, Mansa Badaifa will give me a share together with you. Be by Mishnah, if you claim I'm not your brother, I'm Ruben's son, then hopefully, Paul with the Paul of In other words, let's, what happened was Ruben died, Shimon inherited Ruben. And then, now Shimon died. And the question is, um, the suffix says, I'm Ruben, so I'll give me everything, and reopen the case. That's called Hodder Dino. Let's reopen the case. Even though Shimon already inherited Ruben, let's reopen the re examine the case. And, um, and, and, um, and, uh, or if I'm your brother, then let's split equally. Says the Gemara. In fact, there's an argument if we do such a, if we do such a thing to reopen a case. If at the time the case was ruled correctly, and later on something develops and maybe it changes, the question whether you reopen the case, you just leave things lying. Says the Gemara, Rababa, but I've come dinner. Rababa said, Leave the, the, the way it is, and therefore we don't agree of the case. Ruben definitely, the suffix definitely does not, has no, cannot take a claim that I'm Ruben's child and reopen it. We're not going to. So, therefore, it's a question is he Shimon's child and he gets a share, or he's Ruben's child and he gets nothing? Um, and Abimi says, Abimi says, 
Had din. No, we definitely re-examine the whole din. We reopen the din and we take back the in, in the inheritance that Shemitah took Reuben, and we look at it again. <clears throat> Um, so according to the one that says, come dinner, leave things where they are, then the son of Reuben gets nothing. Because if your son of Reuben, too late, we're already passing, he goes to Shimon. If you're the son of Shimon, um, they'll say, prove it that you are the son of Shimon, maybe you're the son of Reuben. So he gets nothing. And the other opinion says, how did they revisit the whole thing? And therefore what we do, we give him half, since we don't know really if he's Reuben's son or not. Maybe he's Reuben's son, so he gets half of the estate. Um, um, maybe, or maybe you, you give him a third, whichever way we decide to rule. Says the Gemara, um, Lema, let us say that this idea of whether we ever reopen a case or whether we leave things where they are, what, since we made a ruling before, that's how it remains. Lema, let us say, but look to the Admon, but I the same argument as Admon and the Rabban. Vitnan, we learned in Ksubis, we learned a very interesting Machlech is, so a person had a field right in the epicenter and was surrounded by four fields. And he used to have a, a path to be able to get to his field from outside. And he went away for a while and he forgot, um, you know, where exactly the path was. So now, so he overseas grass overgrew everything and therefore he cannot, he's running wild and he cannot figure out where his, his trail is. His admin, my admin says, yay, little bit sudden. She gave him the shortest one, you know, but take away the least amount of land from any of those uh, landholders. And um, and that's it. And the Chacham say, "Yikach leiderek b'meim mana." Let him pay top top dollar to be able to acquire a piece of land. Or if not, figure out a way how to fly and get into your place. We ask that Abonam the Chayda Shapu come out and Abonam is correct. He has to have a pathway. He used to have a pathway, so he's entitled to get something. Here we're talking about that four people were surrounding him from all from four sides, and if each on each side, north, west, and south and east, each side was a different landowner, and uh, and that's why the chacham say he gets nothing. He has to pay top dollar. Because which landowner is he going to force to give him a piece of land so that he can have a uh, the, somehow a path to get to his property. So he said, if that's the case, then my time at the Admin. The wine woman Admin say, yes, you can force them. You gotta give them the Tzara. Mama Rabbi says, Rabbi, as follows. Babo, also, let's say, initially there were four different landowners and they sold on, sold it to another four different people. Then these four people bought the same rights as the first four people. And the first four people didn't have to give them a path. Each one would say, go to the next guy. What do you want from me? Why you, you decided you want to use this path here? Go to the next guy. Babo, also, or even was one person who owned all the properties around there, but now four people bought it. It's each one going to say, look, um, I don't have to give you the, the, the path. Go to the next guy. Everyone agrees they can push him away. He pleaded, we're talking about a case here with Bechad, the Osim, and Kerech Arpa. There used to be uh, four different people. We don't know where the path came, but now there's one owner who bought all four properties. So he can say, Memanusha, the guy has a field in the center, has a field in the middle, Memanusha. Whichever property, definitely we all agree there was one, there was a path there. We don't know which one it is, but since you're the owner now, the new owner of all four properties, of all four directions, so therefore, your mother should have to give me a the right to have a path here, access way. Uh, you have a path here, I'm entitled to it. The say no. They say that the four people tell him that if you if you get paid, then fine. But if you're gonna be not gonna pay, we are all gonna give back the properties to the to um to the owner. So this one guy, this one guy who has a property says, if you don't, if you don't keep quiet, I'm going to give the property back to the four different owners, and you fight it out, and what are you going to get? Absolutely nothing. So Rashi says this entitles this person to say, I will list, I will, I will not going to give you a path, I will sell you a path, but the right amount, and 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 not the exorbitant amount. Rashi disagrees. He says that you can even sell an, an exorbitant amount. Why should you have to give him the right amount? Since I I can uh, push him off from one to another, I'll say. You don't know which of the, I can always give back the start and they'll have nothing because the four landowners, each one can push you for the next. So pay a premium, otherwise forget. The lawyer, if not, and you can no longer have a, and you will have no case, uh, no case whatsoever. So we can, we can say, give back the start. In other words, reopen the din and change the things around. And the, and the admin says, no, come dinner the way it is, it is. Said Yimor Leimer, Rab Abba, Rab Abba, who says that we say, "Come dinner, the leave the things we are." The Omar, the Rabbi Ram, Rab Abba says, "The Omar Kirabonon." 
he says that what he holds like Rabban, only things where they are. And Rabbi Yimya says like Admon. Rabbi Yimya says no. He since since we uh, there used to be a path, he has the right to reopen the case and tell this new guy who owns it that uh, Manushech, I have a path. So give me that path. Over Rabban, another Amri, I can hold a pilka Admon. I can hold like Admon. I I say that you you leave things the way they are. And Adma said, you reopen the case. No, Ad can't come down. It's definitely Dagi Chagabakwa. Gabakwa. I used to have a path, there's no question. And therefore, one of the four owners would have to give me a path. We just don't know which one it is. But now that new, the new owner is a single owner, he owns all four properties. So the definitely have to give me a path. And therefore, we're going to reopen the case. Uh, so it's like a tiny of a vada. I will hold him, he can but over here, you don't know. Yeah, I don't know who I am. I don't know if I'm Ruben's child. I don't know if I'm, if I'm Shimon's child. I don't know how much I'm demanding. Am I demanding, if I'm Ruben's child, I'm demanding um, you know, a certain amount. And if I'm Shimon's child, I'm demanding a different amount. So therefore, since I'm not sure where I'm from, maybe everyone agrees that you do not uh, open the case. Uh, that's one way. Rabbi Yimir says, Rabbi Yimir says, how did they do the uh, open case? I'm not going to go to the bottom. I'm not going to go to the bottom. I have a strong argument. Look, if you're going to push me too hard, you're not willing to pay the exorbitant amount, you're not willing to pay a price uh, uh, for this path, I'm going to give it back to the original owners and then go deal with them, and you'll get nothing. You have no case to them. I will hold over here. In the case of the Suffolk and the children of Shimon, me, much as I'm a Mexican name, how can he? What can he say to him? What am I going to do? Give what back? And therefore, you have no leverage whatsoever. And yeah, <clears throat> and that's why you leave things where they are. Says you want to further another case. Suffolk the Yavam. So you have a Suffolk, whether it's Ruben's child or Shimon's child, and Yavam is Shimon himself. What happened was that Yaakov, the father of Reuben and Shimon, passed away. And now they're coming to decide. So the Reuben, so the suffix said, maybe I'm Reuben's son, I'm entitled to have. Suffolk, I'm a high gavra by Mishnu. I am Reuben's child, the power of the deal, and never happens mine. Yavu Mama Shimon says, you're my son, the less luck with me, you have nothing. So have a Yavam Vadai, the suffix suffix. So this case here, the Yavam is definitely Shimon is Avad, what about it? He definitely is entitled to have. He's definitely a Yaakov's son entitled to have. The question is, what about the Reuben ship? Does it go to the Suffolk or does it go to Shimon? So, the, so therefore, because Shimon is a Vada and, and the Suffolk is still a, a Suffolk, Shimon takes it over. <clears throat> the Suffolk is not much of a Vada. A Suffolk cannot overturn a Vada. Next case. What about similar story, but not that the dispute is between the Suffolk and Shimon himself, but between Suffolk and Shimon's children? Suffolk, when a Yavam Shmuel Lachman is saying, "Father, Suffolk, I'm a who gave the bamis no ayim even child before I was allowed to have." Who palga did you? When a Yavam Mam Lachmanat, and then they say, "No, you're our brother." So we have we're now a total of three. You only entitled to a third. Who months is the Adam? And you all you have a share with us. So what do we do? So the, so Paulgan the Kamaydulu who he's my even if he says I'm Reuben's son I'm only entitled to half. So he's definitely offering them the other half. So the half that he's offering them they definitely take. Shockly, shockly. Tils of the Kamaydulu but they they're admitting that he, that he's their brother and therefore he's entitled to a third. So they give him a third. He takes a third and they take a half. He's he's conceding that they own half and they conceding that he owns a third. That he's our brother and therefore he's entitled to a third. Shako, he takes it, posh loose, what's left in that property that stayed down to sixth, because he took a third and they took a half, so therefore for five, six were taken. So what do you have left is one sixth. And now, but we don't know who's entitled to that one sixth. And we divide that. Last case, what other way around? Sava, the Zayda Yaakov, the Yavam and Shimon, the Nikhze Safik are now disputing over the Nechassim of the Safik. He died and he had some assets. Or he saw the Suffolk when it's the Yavim, or the, the grandfather and the Suffolk are having a dispute over the Nechassim of the Yavim. And we don't know, each one knows that the, 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 the Suffolk says, I am Ruby's really child, I'm entitled to a half. And the, the, the other one said, No, maybe you should be child, you entitled to nothing. I mean, Mom, the Suffolk, we're helping. This is Mom, and that is, a, we don't know who's right. And therefore, we divide it equally. Okay, everyone have a good day.